colder waters in Australia offer plenty of great fishing options. The AFN Fishing Show heads south in this episode to troll for shallow water trout before hitting the Southern Ocean waters to target Southern Bluefin tuna on stickbait lures. Trolling for shallow water trout can be difficult. Using a little logic and a good approach can quickly turn fortunes in your favour. Bill Classen hits a productive Victorian impoundment and shows us how it's done. With the drought breaking in winter of 2010, all the lakes in Western Victoria fill virtually overnight. This left Victorian fisheries with the urgent job to restock the lakes. Fisheries moved mountains and actually got trout into the lakes in November of 2010, and today, some 12 months later, the results have been nothing short of amazing. A lot of anglers think trolling for trout is nothing more than just casting your lure out the back trolling around the lake. There's a little bit more to it than that. If you want to be successful, you really need to know just what you're doing and how you're catching fish. The southern shore area here of Lake Bolax is an ideal place to, uh, to start your trolling run. Average is between about 1.5 and 2.5 metres deep, so it's not very deep at all. Trolling these shallow lakes like Lake Bolac, 13 gram Lofty's Cobra is an ideal choice. The whole lake is only about, or well, probably only average, is about 2.5 metres of depth, so it's really, really shallow. One of the problems you've got with that is you've got motor noise. Shallow lakes, it really amplifies the, uh, the motor noise and really affects the fish. And the one thing that we've found, you've got to troll well back. We're talking 60, 70, 80 metres back. Now you can't cast a um, a lure that far back even off one of these rods so sort of a bit of a complicated problem when you're trolling you're just going to have to try to throw the lure back as far as you can which I reckon with the wind it's gone about 50 metres now I can't just let it back so it'll to, uh, to 80 metres because it's going to sink to the bottom and snag up it's a lot of weed in the lake as soon as you get a little bit of weed on the on the lure you won't catch fish so you're just going to have to feather, there's a bit of setting up to it. So just feather the lure back. It may take about five minutes at times just to get that extra. There you go, see I've hit the bottom already. And that's what you don't want. So I'll have to bring that in. But I can't overemphasize the, the need to get your lures well back away from the boat. Best lure colors in Lake Bolac. I'm using a uh, pink or a red. And of course, because the lake's full of galaxids, something in a white, something like this number 60, works equally as well. Now you can see here that lure's set. Now the idea is, you're just going to have to try to slowly let it out that extra 20 metres without having the lure drop an extra metre or two and pick up the bottom. filled and flooded in July, August of 2010, it overflowed down a dry salt creek to the Hopkins River system. This triggered a once in a lifetime response migration of perhaps a quarter of a million galaxies from that Hopkins system up the salt creek and into the lake to feed on the prolific new food booming in the flooded lake. The water receded in October of 2010, trapping the galaxies in the lake. Fisheries then stocked their 5,000 rainbows in November about 75 grams each at the time. Now, only 11 months later, some of those trout are over four kilos. Now that's stunning. Here we go, we've got one on. Feels like a solid fish and that's well back too. That was interesting because it was just hit it just as I was feathering it back a little bit. There was still a bit of action there. Fish in here are running, I think, between about a kilo and, oh, they're fit too. 
And if you're lucky, probably, well, up to three, maybe a bit over. And this is only a small fish for, for the lake. Here we go. Oh, what a, I don't even know, what a cracker. Now that's a small fish, that's like, that is, in all honesty, a small fish for the lake, but it's probably still gonna be well over a kilo. Look at the colours on it, it's just beautiful. Now what I've done here is I've purposely, purposely cast out and just let the lure fall, free fall, trying to let line out, let it out to that 80 metre mark. And as I said, if you just do it that way and just free spool it and let it drop down, it can do one of two things. You can obviously go all the way to the, hit the bottom, snag up and then you're not gonna catch any fish, or it'll do what this has done and because you're allowing it to free fall, the single hook, there we go, will foul up and I'll just set it up again there and it'll just fall on itself the lure will still work, you're not really going to know that it's not working properly, but you've just, you've just free spooled the line, allowed the lure to fall in on itself and it's, and it's just fouled up on the, on the hook, like so. And obviously you won't catch any trout like that. So with these cobras, when you're fishing them, cast them out and you've got to control that drop back. Just metre at a time, let it out a metre. Get, it, get the lure working again, another metre, working again, another metre, and just control it. So there's a little bit to it, especially in these shallow lakes. The other thing I like to do too when I'm trout trolling, is actually monitor where I am on the lake and depth of water. As you can see here, we're in about two, only two metres of water, so there's a few factors that we have to take into account when we're trolling in a lake that's shallow. The other important thing, as you can see here, this is my troll, my troll lines. Every time I catch a fish, I mark it. It's amazing, even on a lake, how you forget where you've, where you've caught a trout. And quite often, where you catch one, you'll catch more. So as we progress on the day, we'll see how many of these marks we get, how close they are together, and just how concentrated those troll lines will get. There we go. Oh. Good one. That's a better fish. Still going too. Fit, fat and angry. He's running back towards the boat now. Fit, strong fish. And with this braid, you've got to be a little bit forgiving. Nowhere near as much stretch as with mono, so. And these fish are, can be that big. Some of the fish here have been four kilos. Not that we've been that lucky today. But I've got to say, they're certainly zoned in on these just two or three particular colours. Nice fish. Fish that's been in here just for 12 months is just amazing. He's all right. Now look at this, look how fat this fish is. Just over, no, just under 12 months in the lake. Complements of all those glaxids that uh, migrated up from the Hopkins River when the lake flooded, filled and flooded. And this fish probably went in 11 months ago at 75 grams. I'd say if we weighed it, it's gonna be two kilos plus, just over the four pound mark. Big fat, Lovely hen rainbow, be careful. And it's nailed that cobra at 24 pink and black colour. It's been hot here for about uh, two weeks. Great fish, great lure, great result. We'll let this girl go, someone else can catch her. Now I reckon if we're lucky enough and we came back here in 12 months time, who knows what the size this guy would be. They could be some fish, serious, seriously big rainbow trout then. They'd be well over five kilos or ten pound on the old scale.
This is a pretty standard way to rig a Lofty's Cobra. Line straight through the lure. Bead. And in this case, I just use a little snap. So it's all pretty standard. Some people use a split ring here. Sometimes others will just go straight to the hook, but I'd prefer to have the hook swing a little bit. And I find these little, uh, little snaps work just fine. Cobras are a very versatile lure and they can take a wide range of troll speeds. The uh, 13 gram lures that we're using here will run between about, I don't know, about 2.4 kilometres an hour up to a maximum of 3.6. And as you can see on the screen here, I'm running at about 2.9 to 3 to 3.1 kilometres an hour. So you can see here to get a bit more action in the lures. In a minute I reckon we'll be up to about 3.5. And today the fish we've caught, we've got a few on the turn, we've actually, we've actually caught a couple when we've been um, holding a rod and actually giving it a bit of extra crank, a bit of extra speed, so they've been on the higher end of the uh, scale. fish. Oh, <laughs> could have netted him in the air. Oh, yeah, just keep him down a bit. How fit are they? Hey. As good a rainbow trout as you want anywhere. Oh. <laughs> That's, that's another cracker. Yeah. Yeah, good on you. Good job. Now he's a nice rainbow. Another very important tip when you're fishing with cobras in any lake, doesn't matter where, is don't troll for an hour or two hours without checking your lure. In this case, it's fine, but quite often, especially if you've trolled for something like 30 minutes and you've not got a fish or a hit, you may have done something wrong. It may have been as simple as a bit of weed on the lure, but certainly check your lures just to see they're right and reset them. Now we've been trolling now for about an hour and haven't had a hit. So we need to do something different. So all we're going to do now is just hand hold the rods. Believe it or not, it makes a heap of difference. What it does, simply the fact that you're hand holding your rod, you drop it back, you'll move it, the lure will just move around the water a little bit more, speed up, slow down. <laughs> Hop up on there. Slow down. Yeah. Yeah, just keep him under the water. Just swim him under. How fat is that? That, that fish, that's just been monstering those galaxids in this lake. Now that fish in any other lake would be a, a kilo, I guess. And I'd say that's easily, that's two kilos there. Fat ass. Mm. Good fish. Best Great. rainbow trout you've caught? I would say so. Magnificent. And barely been in the lake 12 months. And it's just been gorging on these galaxies that have come in. Oh. 
Yep, look at that here. On the popper. Finding schooled southern bluefin tuna usually results in fishing chaos. The AFN fishing team proved this to be true when they encounter big tuna schools in our southern waters. Casting stick bait lures at feeding fish results in crazy action. It's a new day in the southern ocean and we're in a nice sheltered bait at the moment, Billy, but the weather report tells us it's going to blow up later on in the day. And we are going to head out because the crew of Why Not Charters have told us there's plenty of southern bluefin tuna kicking around. And while trolling for those fish is a popular approach around here, we're trying something a bit different today. We're sure, yeah. armed with some stick baits, poppers, and some really tough popping rods. And uh, I know you've been hanging for a long time to test out your popping skills. I think today, pretty good day to do it. Let's get out there and give it a go. Yep, yep. <coughs> yes. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Massive patch of birds sitting on top of a big bunch of southern blues. I've chucked a severe stick bait in the middle of it. I don't think I actually got to the real handle for the first client came. I missed the first fish and I got two more twitches. Saw a big barrel come out and smash it. That is awesome. <laughs> the boys have just let a flurry of stick baits loose in the background and they're drag screaming everywhere. And this is what happens when you find a good patch of southern blues. Yeah, look at the fish, look at all the tuna. Look at them with it. Look at these. Billy, they're here. That's what's done the damage. 155, Sabeel's sinking stick bait. They sink very subtly in the water, horizontally. Looks all a part of a wounded and dying bait fish, which is what all these schooled up southern blues are tuning in to eat at the moment. Put the right presentation in front of them. It's chaotic very, very quickly. There we go. <laughs> sinking paws, floaters, yeah, that's right. They're it's sink, just ignoring it's, the floaters. The well, sinking paws does it because it just tunes them in that something's wounded. Yeah, and they're all hunting around looking for an easy prey. Stick buck looks exactly like the easiest meal that they've had all day. Yeah. Just gonna have to use your roddy Billy. Go to the corner. Coming through, boys. 10 kilos of southern blue fin on the cast. <laughs> Never done that before. I told, you the stick, I told you the stick mates work well on them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. great. That is just mayhem to be casting and retrieving. It's great fun to catch them on the troll because they fight like absolute troopers, but to be able to cast, twitch, twitch, retrieve, and just have them pile it into a lure and rip drag like that is a brilliant experience. Spear time, we'll get him back. What well up, Billy? <laughs> What's working really well today is just pointing the rod to the fish, give them five or 10 quick winds to stimulate that lure before pausing and letting it sink again. Other days when you want that lure really whizzing through the water, you can bring the rod into play, which means you use big sweeping arcs to shoot that lure up towards the surface of the water before you pause it. So reel and rod are both really good tools for making that lure work in different ways. You've just got to tune into what they want, bury those retrieves until you start getting the bites. There he goes. Two twitches. These uh, oh. rods and lures, absolute weapons in this situation. Bunched up schooling fish, feeding on wounded bait fish, to be able to put that wounded imitation in front of them with a rod as chunky and as long as this. Brilliant fun, helps you knock them over pretty quick too. Well, usually. Once again, the beauty of an extended rod, just to keep that braided line away from the boat. It's only one thing that's going to end the battle. Well, two things, I pull a hook, or your line's going to contact the boat. So to be able to have that leverage, get a rod out there away from the boat, 
this helps you get fish to the boat. That fish is thought, I'll have you. You didn't expect on the six trebles. Six treble hook points hanging out of it. That's what all the fuss is about. Southern bluefin tuna. I've caught their cousins, the northern blues. I reckon they go just as hard. And they suckers for a well presented lure. Just like the old Sabeel stick bait. And some boys are telling me in the background, they reckon they taste better as well. I'm a Queenslander, so we might sort it out over dinner tonight. I'll get him back in the water. Let him fight another day. And there's truckloads of them in the background chewing away. I'm back for another, I'm not tight enough yet. A lot of people too say uh, casting poppers is a bit like cage fighting in fishing. So you can go around behind me now, mate. Means that if you get too close to the dangerous end, you get hurt <laughs> at high velocity. It's another neat thing too, Billy. You know, we're, we're casting big lures at high speed, which means you want a really good leader knot that runs through guides. And you also want a rod with nice thick guide system. So we've got these Wilson's popper rods and they've given us those big guides and we combine that with a really nice slimline FG leader knot. And it just makes the casting process that much easier. You get the distance, you don't damage yourself. Poppering, here we come. Oh, yep. Yeah, 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 oh. yeah, yeah. Oh. Yep, look at that. Yeah. On the popper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got a cranky one, Billy? Oh, pull out, is there? <laughs> and on the popper. <laughs> Double-handed approach. Billy's got the big Sabeel splasher. I've got the sinking stick bites. Shows you. Get them tuned in, they're eating off the top and on the sinking ones. Oh. Oh. Doing a fish under your boat, you can start to steer them to the point where you can land them. Oh, far out. Oh. Got a bit of colour there, Nine. There we go. Good fish. One of the predators of the Southern Ocean you find down here around the Great Australian Bight. It's one of the reasons we came out with the crew from Why Not Charters. One of these species was definitely on the list of targets. And I so badly wanted to hook them on stick baits. Mission accomplished. That's hit that popper and it's been hooked in the gill plate, back of the body, can just smash the popper on the top. Well there you go mate, first in the popper for me. Just One. hooked in the gill plate so it's obviously come up on the top of that uh, lure, just jumped all over it and just got hooked and taken off. We're getting it's absolutely incredible. slammed in the southern ocean but they'll still tune in yeah. to stuff splashing on the surface and that's yeah. the Seville 152 splasher. Great little lure for these southern ocean predators, mate. And it's getting pretty ugly out here. I oh, know, it's getting... I reckon uh, that might be all over for us. We've had fun <laughs> with the stick baits and the splashes. Good We've got some shooting. Good it's on you. for us to get out of here. To find out more about AFN or the tackle and gear used in tonight's show, visit our website, afn.com.au, or like our Facebook page, AFN Fishing and Outdoors.